this is Gina. Today I'm going to show you how to make a really simple set with the things in the Sparkling Romance treasure bag. These links are really easy to put together. You have to 20 of them in your bag, so you, there's a lot of things we could do with them. So I made a really cute little necklace with a dangle. All of these things, all of the components that you see are on my website. So if you want to make this and you didn't get the sparkling treasure bag, you certainly can. So this is a really simple set. Turns out really, really pretty. Let me get you in close on the little dangle portion here so you can see how cute it is. And that's what we're going to make today. So let's go ahead and look at the material list and then we'll get started. Okay, for this project, we're going to be using some of the things from the Romance Sparkling Romance Treasure Bag, the most recent that I just released. And though this is a treasure bag video, this is a techniques video also. It is using very basic techniques and very basic beads and, and um, links and things that you can get quite easily. So you can still do this project if you didn't get the treasure bag. And I do have some of these heart links on my website. So you can go get some of those if you'd like. I also have some of these charms and some of these cubes. So if you want to make this, you can. I think I even have the pink and the purple beads available. I know I do. So you can do this if you want. So what we're going to be using is the six millimeter round pink opal or um, simulated opalite beads. And then we're going to be using the six by four lavender paint rondelles. And I will give exact numbers in the description box beneath the video player. Then we're going to be using some of these heart links that came in the treasure bag. You got 20 of them. We'll probably use six, maybe eight of them. I am designing, so and like I said, I'll give you exact numbers. Then I know I'm going to need two head pins, and I've got these little tiny head pins because I'm just going to make an individual bead on each one. So you can use any length you want, and I've got these little short ones. And then I'm going to be using about six inches of chain. I know that I have used quite a bit of chain in previous tutorials, but I do have some of this on the website too, or you can use any chain you would like. That would be fine. I am going to be using the two little cube components, have the little floating crystal in the middle, so the little cube pendant charm type things. I'm going to be using two of those. And I'm going to be using one half of the clasps that were in the bag. Because this has such a big loop, it'll work great for a focal. I'm not really happy with the, the way they clasp because of the big loop. I'm a little disappointed in them, but it'll work great for this. So I will also list some of these in case you need some for this design. And then I'm going to be adding to the treasure bag some 24 gauge wire and I have this artistic wire that is the tarnish resistant silver um, argent anti whatever but you can see it's just it's just artistic wire 24 gauge I'm going to be using some of that I'm going to be using some of the little heart charms I used them in a previous tutorial but you had 15 of them these are also on the website if you want some and then I'm going to be using a lobster claw for this, for my closure. And I've just got a little closed jump ring that's textured, and I'm just going to use that for my closure. You can use anything you'd like for your closure. And then I'm going to be using some six millimeter outside diameter and some four millimeter outside diameter jump rings in the bright silver tone. And then, You'll probably want to make sure you have a chain nose, a flat nose, some flush cutters, and a round nose plier. And I think that's all we're going to need. If I have to add something, I will put it in the description box beneath the video player. But this is what we're going to get started with. And let me rearrange and we'll get started. Okay, so we're going to get started by building the focal first. So what you want is to cut a piece of chain that is two and a quarter inches long, or if you're using the same same chain I am, this is 18 links. 
Now I'm going to cut, I'm going to count eight links. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, which about a, is about a half an inch. On the eighth link, I'm going to put a head pin in it and just kind of arrange it like this. And then I'm going to look at it and make sure that my pendants are going to hang exactly like I want them to. So I want one just above the other. And this looks like this is going to work just fine. So if you're using a different chain than I am, then you may want to just lay it out like this and make sure that it's the length you want. You can start with a longer or shorter chain too. Once I put it here, you can see this is going to be the length of my dangle. So now that I have designated which link I want, I'm just going to kind of spread this out. I've just put a head pin in it to reserve that link so that I don't lose it. And then I'm going to grab a small jump ring, a four millimeter jump ring. See if I can find one that's cut halfway decent. I really have got to get some new jump rings. So anyway, um, here's the opening of my jump ring right here. I'm going to place a player on plier on one side of that opening and then another plier on the other side and I'm just going to crank it open like this. So it's just twisted open. And then I'm going to grab a hold of this link and then move my move my head pin out and see if I can grab this link. Just like that. And then I'm going to put this onto the loop of the clasp and close it just the opposite way that I opened it. Now my jump rings are cut really bad, so I'm going to have to mess with it a little bit. There we go. And get it to close nice and tightly, just like that. Now, I can put my little cubes on the bottom by just opening jump rings again, just like I just showed you. I'm going to grab another one and open it the same way. And then I'm going to grab one of my cubes and put it on there. And then I'm going to grab the last link of this chain and put it on one side of the chain here and close it. Make sure the links of your chain are closed nice and tightly too before you do this. And I have to doctor up my jump ring. And then, once I have that on there, then I'm going to do the same thing with this one. So I will grab another jump ring and open it the same way I've been opening them. And I will grab this link of chain and then my cube and put it on there. Make sure I get this closed. And now I have the beginning of my focal here. I hope I was in camera. Let me back off a little. Now what I want to do is I want to add a couple of dangles on either side. So I want to put like a heart here and maybe a heart here. And then I want to make to get some of my bead color in, I want to make a dangle with one of the beads. Maybe I'd put this one down lower, put this one here, and maybe put the heart up high and put this one down low. So how I'm going to do this is first we're going to make the little components for the beads. So I'm going to push all this aside and I'm going to grab my two little head pins. Now again, you can use a longer one if that's what you have on hand. You just have to cut it down. But I'm using a short one. I'm just going to slide one of my beads on. And then right above this bead, just about a millimeter above, I'm going to make sure that the bead is touching the end, the head. And then I'm just going to bend this straight over right above that bead, just like this. Then I'm just going to kind of place it over my fingers so I can hold on to it well. And I'm going to cut this down just a little because it's a little long. I don't want a great big loop. So I'm just going to cut this down. And then I'm going to grab my round nose pliers 
and put the wire at the very end of the plier here, flush with the plier. And I don't want a big loop, so I'm not going too far down on my pliers, and I'm just going to start to turn. I'm going to turn as far as I can. I'm going to take my hand out. I'm going to turn my plier over. I'm going to grip flush on the end there again and continue to turn. And then I will have a little loop. And what I'll have to do is just kind of straighten it out a little bit like this. And now I have a loop dangle. And we're going to make one more. Go ahead and make one more of these and then we will figure out exactly how much chain we want, where we want to dangle it, and we'll put that on. Okay, so I have made my two little looped components here. And then what we're going to do is we're going to grab a couple of these charms and we're going to put jump rings on them. So again, you're going to grab a four millimeter jump ring and find the opening and twist it open which is proving to be a chore for me for some reason. Let me get that. There we go. And I'm just going to twist this open. And I'm going to put a link, or I'm going to put the jump ring on this little charm here. And close it. And then I'm going to grab another jump ring, put it on the charm. They're prepared. You can leave the jump ring open if you want because we're going to have to open them again anyway. But now everything's prepared. And then I'm just going to grab some chains. I have this little piece here. And what I want is I want this one to hang about. I want to put a little heart on. And I think I want it to be. You can lay them out so you can see where you want it to hang. I think I want it to hang right about here. Actually, I think I want my beaded component to hang. No, the heart is good. So that's where I want that to hang. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my little heart component and I am going to put it on my chain. And then close this. See if I got it closed. And then I can grab another component on the other side and connect it to this one. Then I'm just going to do the same thing, measure each piece of chain exactly how I like it, where I want to put my components, and I'll come back and show you exactly what I have cut and where I want to place it. Okay, so I have figured out basically how I want to put on my dangles to have them lay next to each other. Now this one I put on was nine links. So um, if you're not using the same chain as I am, you'll just have to lay it out just like I did and figure out exactly how you want it to look. You want everything to be just kind of alternating in length. You don't want everything to be the same length. So now that I have this one on the nine links, I put this little purple component on and I cut one, two, three, four, five links and then I can grab my jump ring and put it on the end and then I'm just going to put it on the outside of this heart here. Right there. And now you can see everything is just kind of different lengths. This one could actually be like a link shorter. I might do that. I might like, um, shorten him up a little bit. But then this one, I cut for this side. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven links. And then I'm going to put him on with a jump ring. And you can raise them up higher, like I said, so you have more of your little dangles up higher to um, 
have your little hearts or your little charms up higher away from these guys down here. That's fine too, however you want to do it. This one I've cut three links and I just wanted to show you. For the components I made, I'm just going to open the loop on the component, slide it on my chain, and then close the loop like this. Let's see, close. And then I can grab another jump ring. I guess I should get in the middle of the camera here. I don't know why I'm working on the edge of my bead mat, but it's getting kind of cramped. And then I am going to grab another jump ring and put it on. Now, once you get these on and you don't like the way it looks, just move it around. It doesn't have to be any particular way. Just do it the way you like it. So I've got this on now, and this is what it looks like. And I could possibly move up a couple of them, but I think I'm just going to leave it for now because it's kind of cute the way it works. So um, I'm going to leave it like that. And then if you want something to hang out front instead of in a more linear, if you want something to hang out front, you can always attach something to one of the jump rings that are attaching your chain, and then it'll hang out out front. So like if I wanted to put another little heart, which I might just go ahead and do, I'm going to grab a four millimeter jump ring and I'm going to open it and then I'm going to find the most center jump ring here. I'll move you in close so you can see what I'm doing. It, I'm going to find the jump ring that I put the folded over chain on with my two cubes right here. Let me get you in really close. So you can see I have both of my cubes there. I'm going to scoop up my heart, see if I can do this one-handed. And you know, probably not, but I'm going to try so I don't have to let go of everything. Come on, get on there. Come on, come on. Oh, I'm just not that talented. Okay, so I'm going to have to do this. I'm going to have to put this on here and use both hands and then I'm going to have to find that jump ring again right there and I will grab that jump ring with this jump ring just like this sorry about that I was probably out of camera and then I'm going to close it and now I have a little heart that will dangle just in front of everything else and um, I think that's kind of cute it's like that and um, then and just lay it out like this. Now, what I want to do is I want to put links on either side of my heart clasp. So I'm going to lay this out and see, for some reason I have black stuff on my hands. I don't even know why. It's probably this. But anyway, we'll get rid of that. And... I think I'm going to do three on either side like this. So let me back off so you can see. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to just attach these straight together with two jump rings so that they stay nice and level. I think I'll just do one jump ring to the clasp and then between these I'll do two jump rings. And I think I am going to need for this... Um, for the first two, I think I'm going to use the six millimeter jump rings and then I'm going to get out the four and see if I can attach them with four. I may just have to go ahead and I think I'll just use all six. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to grab a jump ring and open it just like I've been showing you. And then I'm going to grab my clasp and I'm going to put it on and then I'm going to put my link on making sure my link is forward and close my jump ring and actually close it just like that and now when I lay it out this is what I've got and I'll do the same thing on the other side but I'm going to show you with the other jump rings I'm going to grab one and open it and then I'm going to put it on and close it 
and then I'm just going to leave them laying like this and I'm going to grab another one open it and with them together I can just kind of drop that other jump ring down and then I can go into the two of them together like this and now I have double jump rings next to each other not crossed not anything weird but I have two jump rings here holding this and that makes it less likely to turn and it lays nicer on the neck that way um, it'll kind of hold everything in balance since these need to be a particular direction and they need to stay kind of laid out nicely this helps so what we're going to do and we're going to do it off camera so we're going to attach another one of these with double here. Then we're going to go ahead and put one on to the clasping and then do this side with the double jump rings also. And then we'll come back and continue. Okay, so off camera, I decided I wanted to put four hearts on either side. So I just did it exactly the same way I showed you. I just added another heart on either side. And then I did also decide that I wanted to have two jump rings on the link that attaches to the clasping. So I added another jump ring on either one just to give it a little bit more balance. And I think it, it does add quite a bit more stability in the way that the necklace is going to hang on the neck. It will stay straighter. So now I have a nice little dangle and I have the beginning of my necklace and let's just see what it looks like. And now I just have to add the back of the necklace. This right now is about eight inches long. So I need to add probably about six inches more on either side. And I've decided that I want to make a beaded chain with the purple and the pink beads. So I'm going to set this aside and I'm going to grab a piece of my 24 gauge wire and just cut yourself off, of, you know, about a six to eight inch piece, 12 inch piece, something like that. We're going to be using the wire for um, our components. And so it doesn't really matter how much you have. You, you just want to start with a little length so you can cut your components from there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make little components that look like this. And then I'm going to attach them together. So let me show you what it looks like here. Just like this. So I'm going to wrap one end and then I'm going to leave the other end open with a loop. So then I can attach my next unit to this one. So I'm going to alternate colors. I'll do a pink, then a purple, then a pink, then a purple. So I want to make a purple one now and I'm going to show you how I'm going to do this. So I'm just going to start with my length of wire and I'm going to grab my round nose pliers and about an inch and a half down I am going to, I think that's an inch and a half, let me see, it doesn't really matter but it's about an inch. So about an inch down, I am just going to place my pliers towards the tip because I don't want a big loop, well, maybe right about here, and I'm going to bend that wire over the top, just like this. And then I'm going to move my pliers so that they're positioned where that bend is. And then I'm going to bring this wire over the top, and then I'm just going to draw it underneath my pliers. And now I have a loop. So I just basically bent my loop around my pliers, just like that. And then I'm going to grab my flat nose pliers and I am going to just bring this wire up. I'm holding onto the loop. Bring this wire up, same angle of the um, pliers. And then I'm going to grab another pair of pliers and I'm just going to wrap about three loops around the long length of wire. And then I have a loop, so I will cut the excess off, maybe, if I can hold it. There we go. I cut that off real close, and then I'll just squeeze that little end in. And this is what we have, a little loop like this. Then we're just going to take our bead 
and pop it on the wire. Drop it down. And you can just cut little lengths of wire too if you don't want to work with a long one, but I just don't really mind working with the long piece. So this is how I'm doing it. And then I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to place them right above the bead here. I don't know where I need to have you positioned to see here. And then I'm just going to bend my wire over the top of my pliers. So I'm holding my bead mats here. My hand is parallel to the bead mat flat like this. And then I'm going to turn my pliers so that they're positioned up and down. And then I'm going to bring my wire over the top of the top prong of the plier. And then I'm going to draw it underneath and turn my hand at the same time. So now that my hand is parallel again and my wire is wrapped underneath the plier, just like this. And I have a nice little loop and I'm just going to cut my wire, leave myself about an inch like this. And that's probably a little much, but I'm going to leave an inch and that's what I have. So you're going to make a bunch of units like that. Now what I can do is I can take this new unit I just made and I can open my loop a little bit like this. And then on the loop that I closed on my previous unit, I can drop them together just like this. And then I can grab my chain nose pliers. I'm going to hold on to that new loop like this. And then I'm going to switch hands here and I'm just going to put my wire up so that it's basically the same angle as my plier and I'm going to wrap. So I'll grab another plier and I'll just start wrapping. And I'm doing about three loops. Just like that. Then I can cut that little excess off with my flush cutters and tuck it in. And now I have started a beaded chain. And my next one I will make exactly the same way, attach it exactly the same way, and just alternate my colors. So I have a purple one here, I'll go ahead and put another purple one here, and then a pink, and so on. And I will do that until I have made about six to eight inches. I will come back and tell you exactly how many units and we'll measure it out so you can see how you can adjust the length of your necklace because this is how you're going to do it. This is going to be the back of the necklace. So continue making loops connected like this and um, I'll come back and show you exactly what I've made. Okay, as you can see, I have finished my little chain, my beaded chain, and I have put 10 units together, so I have 10 beads here. Now, if you want to end on the same color, then go ahead and make another unit, make 11. If you don't care if you end on the same color that you started, then, and you just want the length you want, then uh, an even number is going to end on a different color than you started on. So anyway, um, I have made 10 units. This is going to make me, once I put on the jump rings and the clasping, it's going to make me about a 20 inch necklace. So you can adjust the length of your necklace according to how many beaded units you make here. So I have my last unit here and I am going to go ahead and close the last loop. You could drop your clasping on and then close it, but I find that these loops like this can kind of do weird little things. So I want the flexibility to have a jump ring between my loop and my clasp. So I'm going to close this one. So I'm just going to grab a hold of it. Let's see if I can reposition this to where I can actually do this. I'm going to grab a hold of it, grab another pair of pliers, and boy, I am just not prepared here. There we go, and start to turn this. So I'll just turn my last unit and close this loop instead of adding another one on. And I am going to trim it somewhere. There they are. And then tuck this little 
end in. I think I did it on the first try. How about that? Okay, and then straighten out my loop a little bit. And then I can grab a jump ring and I will attach the chain to this heart here. You can use two jump rings if you want, but I think we're only going to need one. Um, but we can always change our mind and come back and put another one on too if we want to. But I'm going to use a four millimeter jump ring and I'm just going to open it and pop this little guy on here. Oops, come here. And close it. And fix the stupid jump ring that doesn't, that is, they're cut just so badly. Okay, now I have this end attached and I just need to put my clasping on this end. So I think I want to try a little bit heavier gauge jump ring to put my clasping on with so that it doesn't come open. However, it's kind of a big, my smaller gauge, my smaller jump rings are a little bit smaller gauge. My bigger ones are a little bit bigger gauge. So this is going to be kind of big. I may change my mind on it, but I'm going to put my clasping on here and then put in the beaded chain onto the jump ring and I have my end. And I'm going to find a smaller jump ring and put that on. But this is how you're going to do this and you're going to go ahead and do the other side of the necklace exactly the same way and then we'll come back and we'll lay it out pretty and see what it looks like. Okay, so as you can see, I have finished my second side and put my little jump ring on the end just like I did the other side with the clasp and this is what it turned out like. I think it turned out really pretty. I put it on, it went, it hangs really well on the neck and it looks really pretty. It's just a cute little thing. So this is what it looks like when it's all finished. I did adjust my little pieces down here. I took a link off of this one and this one and this heart here. Just enough to make them lay apart a little bit more. So let me move this up and show you close up what the dangle looks like. And that's what that looks like. And it's really cute. It all hangs nice. It looks really nice. So I think I'm going to design a pair of earrings and then we'll call it good. So hang on just a second. I'll gather some stuff together, throw a design together, and we'll make some earrings. Okay, so I have designed a little earring to go with this. It's another long dangle. I've been into long dangles lately. I don't know what's up with that, but you can always adjust it by doing more or less on the bottom here um, of chain and of your components. You can rearrange it, but we're going to make another earring that will mirror this one. So our heart's going this way and we'll make it go this way. So we're going to use another link and then we are going to make two wrapped components and I've got one wrapped already. I'll show you how to wrap the other one. Of course, it's exactly the same thing we've been doing except for we're just closing both ends instead of leaving one open and then sliding the next one into it. Then we're going to need a couple of the charms and you're going to double this because of course I've already made one. You need an ear wire. I've cut three links of chain and if you're not using the same chain then you're going to have to figure out how much you need of your chain. And then I've cut two links of chain and then I have five jump rings here and a little piece of wire. So I have more than I need but you just have to probably cut maybe three inches of wire and you'll be fine. And we're going to go ahead and make a component like this one with the pink bead. So let's move all this aside and grab our wire and grab your round nose pliers. I'm going to go about an inch, inch and a half down, just depends upon how much you think you need. And then I'm going to push the wire over the back portion of the plier. Then I'm going to turn my hand so that the portion is standing tall or the plier is standing tall. I'm going to bring this wire over the top of the top 
prong here of the plier, I'm going to turn my hand and bring the wire underneath. So now my hand is flat and parallel to the bead mat and I have a loop in my wire just like this. I'm going to make it a little smaller. And then I'm going to grab a pair of chain nose pliers and I'm going to hold on to that loop and I'm going to straighten out the wire the excess wire so that it's the same angle as my pliers and then I'm just going to turn the wire around the long portion of wire three times. Just like that. Now I'll get you in close so you can see what it looks like. This is what it looks like. And then I'm just going to grab my flush cutters and I'm going to cut that wire down and then I'm going to make sure it's not pokey by pushing it down with my other pliers here. Straighten my loop back up and then I'm going to pick up my bead, put it on my wire and back off a little so I can stay in camera. I'm going to drop this bead down and now I am going to grab my round nose pliers right on top of this bead here and I'm going to again push my wire over the back prong of the plier while I hold my plier flat. Then I'm going to turn my plier vertical like this and then I'm going to bring the wire, the excess wire, over the top. As I do that, as I go around, I'm going to turn my hand flat and bring the wire underneath the plier just like this and now I have a loop. I'm going to hold on to my loop and then I'm just going to turn this wire three times just like that and then flush cut it and tuck the excess in Like that. Then I'll just straighten out my loops. I made my loops pretty different on this one, but you know, hey, whatever. <laughs> and then I'm going to make another one. So you're going to make one of the purple and one of the pink, and then I'm going to lay out this one so I can do just the opposite of what I did on this one. So facing forward because this is kind of domed so you can tell which side is forward I am going to mirror the one I have so now I need to put my pink one in front here and I need to put my purple one here so my pink one is attached to the three links of chain so I've got this little three links of chain I'm going to open one link because they are open links so I'm just going to grab it and did I do that or did I? No. So you don't have to do that. We're going to grab a jump ring because I attached them with jump rings. I didn't attach it. So, um, okay. So I attached one end with a jump ring. Sorry, guys. Uh, as I do this, it gets late at night and I get tired. So my three links are on a jump ring and then I'm going to put them on the heart. And then I'm going to close the jump ring and then I'm going to open the link the bottom link here and put on my pink bead and then I'm going to use a jump ring to attach the heart to it so now I have my pink guy in front here but you know what that looks much longer what did I do oh I know what I did so we're gonna put the purple guy on so because I grabbed the three link the the pink one is on the two link sorry guys I really am getting tired and it's gonna be kind of funny to watch me do this because that actually has one, two, three, four links. So you're going to cut one four links, and then you're going to cut one two links. And on the four link, fourth link, 
we are going to put the purple bead there we go <laughs> sorry I could redo that and not show you what mess I am but you know this is how it works you just it's reality man just the way it is okay so now I have to find the chain with two links and I'll put a jump ring on one end and since I am mirroring the other one I have to go to the inside of this one so I'm going to pick up the two links put it on the jump ring come on there we go this really is not this hard okay so now I'm going to put this on to the link here and close it and straighten out my crappy jump rings and then I'm going to make sure I'm in camera because I'm not paying the slightest bit of attention here now we are going to open the link the bottom link I'm going to find where it opens here and pop this guy on there and now I have it mirrored so all I have to do now is put my little hearts and my ear wire on so I'll open another jump ring grab a heart pop it on the jump ring pop it on the bottom of the uh, link I made and then right back out here grab another jump ring open it grab another heart put it on this one and then I will put on my ear wire I'm just going to open the ear wire and just pop it onto that. So just open the side that's open, just lift it like a deer jump ring, and then put it onto your link like this, and then close the ear wire. And then, voila! you have a pair of earrings they mirror each other so they'll work really nice on and then you can put on your necklace with it and voila you have a set let me straighten this out really pretty I'll show it to you one more time as a set and then we'll call it good okay here's the entire set and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial there will be more coming um, there's a whole lot left in this bag to mess with and I also want to do a couple of other things that are not bag related that I have planned so I hope you stay tuned and if you liked this little tutorial could you please hit the subscribe button and maybe the thumbs up and maybe the notification bell if um, you do I would appreciate it because it really does help my channel so anyway this is what we have done today I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one bye bye <laughs>